Greetings Earthlings, I'm back with a review of another dynamic instrument microphone. So today we're looking at this guy, the Blue Encore 100i, which is the instrument version of the Encore 100. And if you do want to pick this guy up and you are able to find it, it'll set you back around $90 and I'll throw some links down below. I don't know what they'll be though. For this review, the microphone's connected directly to the 2i2 second gen with the input gain set at 3 o'clock. Not going to do any post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course you will get the microphone. You get a rather nice cloth carrying pouch. You get a microphone mount, which I've raved about quite frequently in the past because it has both 5 8 inch and 3 8 inch threading. So you don't need to have any kind of adapter if you have a standard microphone stand and it comes with some documentation. As far as the build quality, this microphone feels pretty dang stellar. It has an all metal body, a metal grill and a good amount of weight to it. When you do compare it to the Encore 100, which is the vocal version of this microphone, you can see the 100 is slightly longer and the other big differentiating factor is the 100 has these rivets along the side to help with gripping when you are hand holding the microphone for vocal use. As far as the specs, this thing has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 50 hertz to 16 kilohertz, a max SPL of 154 decibels, an impedance of 150 ohms, and a sensitivity of approximately negative 59 decibels. Now I'm spinning around the Encore 100i to show you what the off-axis coloration and rejection is. We will continue around the microphone to the 180 degree position. We will continue moving around to the secondary 90 degree angle. We will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Get off that microphone clip, you dumb cable. And there we are. And now we're testing that background noise rejection by banging on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect of this thing. About one foot away from the Encore 100i, two feet away from the 100i, and four feet away from the Encore 100i. Now in case you do want to handhold this microphone on stage, I am testing the handling noise and I'm surprised to say it actually performs better than other vocal handheld dynamic microphones. So good on you, Blue. But now let's go ahead and test the plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now here's a very quick sample of how the Blue Encore 100 sounds in comparison to the 100i. This is the vocal version of the microphone. We'll go ahead and get really close to it and show you the proximity effect. Please bring pizza pronto. See how it performs with plosives. And there you go. And of course, we'll go ahead and do the exact same thing with the 100i. We'll go ahead and get right on top of it to show you the proximity effect. We'll please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Test the plosives. And that's how it compares. <laughs> I think that blue is likely killing their dynamic microphones, oh no. Hey! Well, it's a, it's a microphone. I don't think anybody can deny that. In terms of pros, it does have a rather nice build quality and it also has a very nice amount of clarity, which makes it very easy to understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. But then in terms of cons, it really doesn't do a good job with plosive rejection. The proximity effect can get out of hand very, very quickly. And it also has a somewhat V-shaped sound where the bass is accentuated, the treble is accentuated, and the mid sounds just a little bit recessed. But as far as my overall thoughts on the electric guitar, I really wasn't a fan of it. And that's because it does get a little bit boomy and boxy when you close mic a guitar cab. And that is going to be what you want to do if you are live micing an instrument to limit the amount of bleed between the stage instruments. 
On the acoustic guitar, I actually really liked this microphone because it did have a nice full low end without sounding boxy, and it also had a really nice amount of attack and clarity up top without becoming shrill or harsh. Next, for singing, I found it to have a sparkly and gritty top end, which I did not think was very flattering. And then it also has a very prominent low end. So with those two things mixed together, I do not like the sound of this for singing at all. And lastly, for spoken word, as I've said a couple of times, it does have a dominant low end, which actually kind of sounds like a rap lyric. She has a dominant low end, but it also has a boost to the treble frequency, which brings out the sibilance and makes it sound a bit too gritty for my personal preference. So for spoken word, I am also not a fan of this microphone. And that brings us to would I recommend this microphone? And I am sure most of you can guess, no, I would not. And the main reason why I don't recommend this microphone is just the tone of it. It has a very V-shaped tone, which I already mentioned. Very accentuated bass, very accentuated treble and air frequencies, meaning the mids sound very recessed, and I hate that tone for almost everything unless you're playing in Pantera, you leave the mids in the mix. Leave the mids in the mix, leave the mids in the microphone. You're not Dimebag Daryl, okay? And one final conspiratorial side note here. When looking at the spec sheets of the 100 and the 100i, which you can see on the screen, the frequency response graphs are shown to be the exact same. But when you listen to the differences between the microphone, there is a very serious difference. Blue, what gives? Are these frequency response graphs completely wrong and just made up? Or are my ears broken? What's going on, Blue? Tell me. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I did have a little bit more fun with today's review, but I hope you still got something out of it. And if you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. But if you hated it, thumbs down. Want more videos? You can watch a few more over there. And you could also hit subscribe below the video and hit that bell button as well. If you want to hang out in the Discord server, I'll throw a link in the description. And I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.